And it was based on an article that arose from a computer tournament, right? Now, let me put it to you this way. Say you want to buy, you've got to, you might have got to meet this woman, and she's got medicine or drugs, possibly illicit, that you want to buy off her, right? And she says, look, I'll bring them in a brown paper bag. You bring me a brown paper bag full of coins, and we'll swap. Right? We'll swap. And then, but as it gets closer, you'll start to think, how do I know she's actually going to give me the medicine? Maybe she's going to screw me over and give me a cup of water. Maybe I should just give her a bag of slugs instead of the coins. And that way, at least if she screws me over, I've already at least screwed her over. And if I give her the slugs, maybe I'll get the medicine and still have the money. So under gang theory, what you should do is screw each other over. <laughs> but what happens if you iterate what they call iterators? What if it's repeated an indefinite number of times? And screwing her over the first time doesn't make sense, does it? Because you think, oh no, I'm going to keep coming back and getting the medicine. So what tactics do you evolve? What, what, what's your tactic if she screws you over once and doesn't give you the proper medicine? What? So this was framed as a computer tournament by a guy called Robert Axelrod, and out of that rose a book called The Evolution of Communication. And so all these computer, to, computer programs, people wrote their tactics as computer programs, and all the computer programs competed against one another, right? And the winner, the overall program that won the tournament was going to be the one that got the most cooperative responses rather than defect responses. And the winning program was created by a fascinating guy called Anatole Ramaport. I suggest you look him up. And his tactic was, and it was the simplest program, the, by far the simplest program, shortest. Its tactic was cooperate, the first move, and then just do whatever the other player did the last time. Right? So if they cooperate, next time you cooperate. They defect, next time you defect. Whatever it was. Now, it won the overall tournament, but consider this. It could never do better than tie. Right? It never set out to beat the plot the player the program was playing against. It could only tie. And yet it won the overall tournament. Now that's very powerful. So then he organized another tournament with, with uh, soliciting entries from internationally, and there were 67 entries, and tip the tap won again by not trying to win. So out of this, I started thinking about human interactions and human communication, both how things were like that in the tournament and how things differ from that in the real world. And that's what gave rise to this book on communicating effectively in ongoing relationships. So this is what the first course is about, the six central aims of adult communication. So just quickly, the first aim is do not try to win. Do not try to win this conversation. Do not try to win the argument. Do not try to get your way. Do not try to get the other person to admit they were wrong. You win by building a great relationship. Not by winning this conversation. So, this is the first paradoxical aim. Do not try to win the conversation. The second aim, central aim of adult communication, because what is an argument? An argument is two people trying to win, right? Oh, I've got to win, I've got to win, I've got to win. Boom, 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 boom. The second aim, and this is the last one I'll be talking about, start cooperatively. Be cooperative. No matter how upset you are, no matter how much you think, I am going to scream blue murder at this person, and I have every right to, don't do it. Start cooperatively and see what happens. Example I use. A few years ago, I was sleeping in my condo, in John Tien, 3 in the morning, and I'm woken up by some maniac banging as hard as he can on his door. Uh, stay open my door, realising he's on another floor. 
He's on the floor above. That's how hard he's banging, right? So I go, oh, okay, put on a t-shirt. I st staggering out, and I go up. So I'm walking out the stairs, and I prepare myself for this interchange with this guy who's almost certainly drunk and stuff. And how do I prepare myself? Do I prepare myself thinking, I'm going to scream Lou Lerner out of this idiot? No. I put a smile on my face as I'm walking up the stairs. So I'm walking up the stairs and he sees the top of my head and he knows he's doing the right thing. And I can see his hands before I see his face. And I see his hands curl into fists. But then as I get further up the stairs, he sees that I'm smiling. And some of his fists go, oh. And then we have a nice polite conversation it emerges he can't find his keys, probably locked them in the room. And we talk for a while, and I suggest the best solution is he comes down and sleeps on my couch. He's a nice enough guy. And he just comes down, sleeps on my couch. I wake him up in the morning. He goes off to the real estate agent, gets his spare set of keys, and it's all good. I don't that because I've conditioned myself to do this, right? But imagine if I'd gone up with this drunk guy and I started screaming abuse at him. So. So, and you can help me, yourself, others that you're in relationship, and others around the globe for nothing. You can go and do this six steps of adult communication, which is only about, I think, 40 to 50 minutes of video or something, and improve your communications. Help me by leaving a hopefully very positive review, which also encourages other people to do the course. It's free. Uh, if you have, it's, on the, it's in the, uh, I'm sure there'll be links on the newsletter also. If you go to my website, renalexander.com, you can just click on the link, uh, which actually takes you to the course, free course. Oh, we've got three minutes? Three? Three minutes? Yeah. Three minutes? Yeah. All right, just quickly then, I think you might get a laugh out of this. I, I'm writing this course on how to charm and engage somebody at the first meeting, but I had these left out over outrageous outrageous uh, suggestions to how to really outrageously impact someone at the first meeting. So I've done a promo video for it, God help me, I'm going to share it with you. Outrageous impact, how to have an outrageous impact in the first couple of meetings. It's just steal yourself.
He's more intelligent than he looks. I don't know it's hard to believe. But actually, the course will be fun and really good value for him. Okay. Don't go if you don't have a sense of humor, though. Okay, bye for now. Say goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> sign up. Sign up. Sign up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I can't believe I did this. This is what they train. This is what you get PhDs for. <laughs> Good one, man. Thanks, Sam Ray. There you go. Thanks for your patience, and uh, it went a little longer than uh, I think we normally get. Uh, please give Red a big hand. Uh, if there's any questions, you can ask him after the meeting. Uh, are you doing a video?